Today, let's take a look at how to set up and install a rootless installation of Docker on an Ubuntu VM inside of Proxmox. We're going to be using the latest LTE version of Ubuntu as of today. The first thing we're going to need to do to start this process is head over to Ubuntu and find ourselves a copy of the image for Ubuntu server. So here at Ubuntu.com, we're granted with a page that looks like so. Up here at Products, we're going to click on it, and then we're going to select Ubuntu Server. For Ubuntu Server, we'll go ahead and click Download Ubuntu Server, and we're going to choose the latest LTS version, which at the time of filming is 24.04. Selecting that, we're given a screen that looks like so. Now, this will generally trigger a download to start in our browser, but we don't want that to happen. And if it happens, we're going to go ahead and cancel it. Instead, Right here at Download Now, we're going to right click and we're going to copy link address. If you're using Linux or Mac, the terminology will be very similar, but different. Now we're going to head back to our Proxmox web interface and we're going to select our local drive. On our local drive, we're going to go ahead and select ISO images if it isn't already selected. Then we're going to press download from URL and we're going to right click and paste that URL in. Pressing query URL, we'll enter the file name here for what this image is going to download. Now we're we're going to head back to our Ubuntu website and we're going to press verify your download. At verify your download, it's going to give you a string that looks like this. We want to pay attention to the SHA sum of 256. We're going to need to know that information. Then we're going to take this string right here and we're going to copy that. Then we're going to go back to our Proxmox web interface. Make sure advanced is checked. Then for hash algorithm, we're going to go down to 256 and we're going to paste that sum. Now that we have all of this configured, we'll make sure verify is correct. Correct. Now that we have all of this entered, we're going to go ahead and press download and let our image download. When this is finished, I'll be back with you to show you the next steps. Now with our image download, time to start creating our VM. We can do that right from this window. Let's go up to the top right hand corner and click create VM. Clicking create VM gives us the setup wizard for the VM and we can start out by giving it a name. All ours video test today. We can add any tags that we desire and we can select here if we want it to start up at boot or not. If you don't have these screens, you can check this advanced button here. You can also configure a startup or shutdown order. So if this needs to start up or shut down after something else or before something else, you can enter a number here. Now we can move on to the OS by clicking next. And here at OS, under storage, make sure local selected. Then select your Ubuntu image under ISO images. And you can press next. Here at system, we can leave everything default, but check QEMU guest agent. Then press next. And I like to to change mine to SATA. It's not a necessary thing that you need to do, but you will want to configure the size of your disk for your system. And remember, it's not always easy to add storage later on to your Ubuntu system, so make sure you give it enough. We'll give ours 50 gigs here today, and if you have an SSD, go ahead and click discard. Then press next, and let's configure the number of CPU cores. Let's give ours two, and we're going to select host. I find on my particular system, although the default of x86-64 v2 ase works fine host gives us a little better performance let's go ahead and hit next and enter the value of ram we want let's give ours somewhere around four gigs then we'll configure the minimum amount of memory and i'm going to configure mine as 2048 and i'm going to tell it that it can share the other two gigs then i'll press next i'll select the network adapter that i want to use and i'm going to select vmbr3 for myself now as a disclaimer if you only have vmbr zero, which is the default that your system installs with, that'll be fine too. You don't need to select the same exact option that I have. Then I'll press next, look over everything, make sure it looks correct, and press finish. Now our system's going to go ahead and create our VM. My system created this with a VM ID of 113. You're not going to need to remember that for this tutorial, but it's always good to take note. Here at options, you can once again configure the VM name, select whether or not you want it to start at boot, configure your shutdown or start startup order, as well as some other options here, including which boot device you want to have run. We won't need to configure any of this for this particular tutorial, but 
you can do that here at Option. If you want to add more RAM or processor or tweak the hard drive size or change the CD-ROM, you can do so under Hardware. Later on, it will be necessary to remove the CD-ROM and you can do that by selecting CD-ROM and selecting Remove or pressing Enter or selecting Edit and saying Do not use any media. For our initial installation, we're going to want to keep Use CDE CD-ROM check and keep our Ubuntu image. Now that we've taken a quick peek at some different configuration steps for our VM, let's go ahead and start it up. We'll do so by pressing start and then we'll head to console. Now that our VM is started up, we're going to go ahead and press enter to select try or install Ubuntu server. Okay, so now it's time to start looking at installing Ubuntu server. We're going to start by selecting English and pressing enter. Now we'll press enter for done here because we want to use the keyboard layout of US English and we can choose whether or not we want to have the added software that comes with Ubuntu or a minimalistic install. I like to do the minimalistic install, so I'm going to press tab until I get here to Ubuntu server, press the down arrow, and press spacebar. You don't need to do so if you'd like to have the added tools. Pressing tab a few more times, we get back to done, and we press enter. I'm going to leave mine as automatic and configure IP address changes inside of my router. If you did want to change your IP address, this is where you would do so. I'm going to leave done selected and press enter. I'll press enter again one more time for proxy address and it's going to go ahead and test the mirror locations to make sure it has communication with the internet. When this is done we can go ahead and press enter and we want to make sure that we're using LVM groups because later on if we do have to add storage it'll be a little bit easier. So I'll verify that LVM group is checked and then I'll press tab until I get to done and press enter. I'll press enter again to verify that everything's correct here and press the down arrow and enter to continue. Now let's set up our user account. I'm going to call mine VE. Please call yours as you wish. I'll give mine a title of test video. Set another username of VE. Enter a super secure password and verify super secure password. Press enter and I want to skip Ubuntu Pro so I'll just go ahead and hit enter. And for install SSH server it's probably a pretty good idea and it makes interacting with your server a little bit easier because inside of VE it's pretty hard to copy and paste and do other things that we're used to in a standard graphical user interface when running from the Proxmox web interface. So we'll hit spacebar, then we'll hit tab, press spacebar. So now that the installation is finished, we can go ahead and press tab, select reboot now, and press enter. Now we're given a screen like this. Let's go ahead and press enter. Proxmox will handle ejecting the CD, not really ejecting, but making sure we don't boot off of it. And our Ubuntu server will boot up for the first time. Now here at this point, we can go ahead and log in with our username and our super secure password. Let's do some good housekeeping things and enter apt or rather sudo apt date super secure password and then we'll run sudo apt grade dash y and install all of our updates. I'll be back with you when this is finished. Okay, so now that we have all of our updates installed, let's go ahead and install QMU guest agent so we can start communicating with our Proxmox host. To do so, let's again enter sudo apt and this time install. And then we'll enter qemu guest dash agent dash y. Now that that has installed, let's go ahead and enter sudo shut down and press enter. And our system should shut down in one minute. Okay, with this screen, we are now shut down. So let's go ahead and start it back up by pressing start. And now that we're running and back in at our login page, let's press summary. And we can see that we've got an IP address of 192.168.14. Too, yours will differ. We can copy that IP address and and if you're on a Mac or a Linux machine you're going to want to open your terminal. I'm going to open PowerShell. You're on our Windows machine we've opened PowerShell and we're going to enter SSH VE at and paste our IP address pressing enter. Now I'm getting an error message let me fix that real quick. Okay let's try the SSH again. This time we'll hit yes and give it our super secure password. Now that we've logged into our system with SSH we can kind of read things better and I wanted one more time do a sudo apt update. Entering super secure password one more time. We see that we have a few more packages to install so let's do an upgrade again. All right so it looks like everything's installed. Now let's go ahead and start the end process of installing docker. We're going to use a tool called carl to go ahead and download a script that's going to install docker for us. So let's enter a command of carl dash s capital s capital l and then we're going to use https colon slash slash get dot docker dot com space
space, pipe delimiter, and sh. So what this command does is it uses a tool called curl to reach out to an SSL secured website, HTTPS, that's at get.docker.com, and we pipe everything to sh. We'll press enter, and the script's going to execute installing Docker. Now that Docker's installed, we want to go ahead and make Docker rootless, and we're going to do so by copying this command right here, by highlighting it, pressing control C. Then we can right click our mouse button inside of PowerShell, and the command comes down here. We can go ahead and press enter and run this command. It tells us that we need some software. So let's go ahead and install that software. sudo apt install dash y uid map base dbus dash user dash session. Press it. Now let's press our up arrow twice to get back to our docker rootless setup install and press enter this time. Now we have docker set up as a rootless install. So let's now issue a command systemctl dash dash user enable dash dash now docker. This should enable the user that we're currently under for docker rights. Pressing enter, this command's issued. And let's check and see if we are indeed rootless. So let's run docker info space pipe delimiter rep and rootless. Pressing enter, it looks like we are indeed rootless. So now it's time to start interacting with docker for your rootless projects.